the video I posted about dust crete a couple of years back uh, kind of took off about this time last year and at this point has over 630,000 views and with that came about 1300 comments and so in this two-part series I am going to go through and answer the most frequently asked questions about dust crete This dust creek wall has been here for two years and there have been uh, questions about whether or not it's weather durable without a plaster. And as you can see, it's in good shape, hadn't gone anywhere. Another question is whether or not it will take fasteners. Honestly, I don't know, I guess it will. I have a four inch uh, construction screw Sure enough, it'll take a fastener. It might even take a brad nail, I haven't tried, but an 18 gauge brad nail might hold pretty well in this material. There has been some shrinking away from the edges. You can see we've got about a quarter inch gap here. I'll get you a close up of that. And because of the shrinking away from the framing members primarily, I've been recommending to people who want to try it that they give it at least 60 days to cure before they do any plastering inside and out. Um, but we'll take a little look around and I'll show you some of the details of how it's holding up and start going through those individual questions. So there's that hole from that screw I just put in. And here is the gapping that we have along that framing member and then along the edges, uh, about a an eighth of an inch or so in most places. Where I have some framing members, I've got a little bit of cracking here and there. I've got a strange crack here, which I believe is a cold joint. I think I stopped there for the day, so I don't recommend cold jointing these walls. I would say run an entire wall section in the course of a day. But you can see I've got a couple spaces where I didn't adequately fill behind my form, but those will either get filled with a little more dustcrete or plaster. The south side of the house is also unplastered. And a little bit of cracking where the framing members are but all of that should hide pretty well with plaster. Now this section of wall, I did do the external plaster. This is just a lime sand plaster mixed with a little bit of the native clay that gives it that buff color. You can see I do have a little bit of fine cracking. Once again, where those framing members were on the inside, or are I should say, here's that cold joint I talked about in the original Dust Creek video. Again, this is the same plaster application in here. I uh, wet knifed it just like I did the interior plaster, get it nice and smooth, but has a has a good look. Now in that original video, I made the claim of invention of this process. And of course, you know, how the comments section on the internet go, there were plenty to uh, uh, push back against that claim. And what I meant by invention is that I thought of the idea, I looked around for resource material to verify the validity of the concept. I found none and I pressed on anyway, and it worked. So. That's what I mean. As it turns out, there is an extensive history of the use of a practice, if not similar to this, identical to this, in uh, Poland and Russia. And so the uh, amusing thing is that in the comments, I get about as many people saying, you didn't invent it, as I do people saying, it will never work. So that just gives you some indication of what uh, comment sections can be like. But yes, it's been done um, 
for 100 years in other parts of the world quite successfully. And there are other examples of people who have used uh, some similar approaches. Um, mm, I think I, I saw one guy who was using all Portland cement and didn't have any lime in a similar sort of application. Uh, some people have used it to do floors and basically just pour in place and tamp floors. So there are other examples of it out there. I'm not attached to whether or not I invented this process, but uh, also glad to know that it has been proven over uh, decades and decades to be a viable way to go about building. So there have been a lot of people who have wondered about more efficient ways to mix it than the wheelbarrow method I show in the video. And there is one way that I'll get to in just a second, but a lot of people think, oh, a cement mixer, you know, at least you could mix the dry ingredients in there. Uh, that honestly would throw much more dust and be much more hazardous way to mix your dry ingredients and the sawdust and the, the binders are so light that just with a hoe, you know, preferably with a handle and like the one I was using in that video, will very quickly mix the dry ingredients together. And then once the water is added, it's very easy to mix it all up into a homogenous um, material. If you do mix it in a cement mixer, and I've done plenty of that as well, it really likes to bind to the blades and the walls of the mixer and you spend more time trying to chisel it out and scrape it off of your machine than you would if you were just mixing it by hand. And it's not heavy work, um, but the one definite way that one could do this much more efficiently is with a plaster mixer as opposed to a cement mixer. And now a plaster mixer has a horizontal axis and blades that turn within a fixed drum and that is very efficient that's what most professional hempcrete builders use unfortunately that appliance runs about twelve thousand dollars so i can't really justify using one for my projects however if i were to do a few large projects in a row it would probably justify either purchasing or renting an appliance like that so if you had a big crew to help you and you have multiple people running wheelbarrows people mixing people packing walls you can accomplish a lot in a very short amount of time which is one of the benefits of the system over uh, trying to raise uh, different levels of air crete into a form or build with cob where you've got about a two foot per day limit um, and much more time consuming to mix that with people stomping and a tarp and, and that whole process so given a, a well-prepared project and a large crew of people, you know, you could do a building like the size of my addition in a day with probably six people. So it can be very fast that way. A lot of questions about lime. What is type S lime? How is it different from quick lime? Now, it would probably be good to go through the basic lime cycle and understand it from the stone on the ground to these building products that we use. So limestone occurs anywhere where there has historically been an ocean and you've got a good deposit of shell material, fish bones, things like that over time gets compressed into limestone. It can be found most areas pretty readily. Now to get from the stone itself, to quick lime, all this required is the application of heat. And it doesn't have to be the intense heat that you need in the furnace where you would make Portland cement, for example. It could just be a campfire. So you could literally pile up the stones, build a fire over it, light it. When it burns out, what's happened to the limestone is that a carbon atom has been driven off of the molecule. And when you take that, and grind it, you have quicklime. When you expose that to water, you're going to have a, a thermophilic reaction that will occur rapidly and potentially violently if there's too much water added at once, and it gets very hot. 
to use that product, product that's typically slaked for two weeks or more. Now, if you add a little bit of water to that fired limestone, it will dissolve into a powder. And that powder is hydrated lime or type S lime. It should also be noted that there are different types of limestone, uh, calcite lime being more common, dolomitic lime or dolomite lime being the rarer of the two. There are other varieties, but principally these are the two that we're talking about. The uh, calcite lime is usually what is uh, used to produce that type S lime that I use. The uh, dolomitic lime is what is typically used in hempcrete, and that's why people are importing lime from France or northern Italy to do hempcrete projects. So, you know, the reason that I've added Portland cement to the mixture is to uh, more closely approximate the properties of the dolomitic lime. I don't know if it's necessary, and that uh, will be covered more in the future tests. So with regard to whether or not the Portland cement is necessary in this recipe, uh, the concern that a lot of people have is they're looking for ways with lower embodied energy and also looking for building practices that might be applicable to someone without the luxury of a distributed supply chain to bring them materials. In other words, could we go out, find some limestones, fire them, and do this without the use of Portland cement? And it's quite possible. Um, we'll do some experiments coming up here in the summer where we'll try just a straight lime version of this preparation and also a mixture of lime and the native clay that would uh, provide perhaps a little more elasticity, it might even uh, help with some of our cracking issues. So we'll, uh, we'll see, you know, if the Portland is in fact necessary going forward. Another reason why I have some cracking in different places may be due to settling issues. Now this uh, building is a post and beam structure, so I don't have a good footer underneath all the walls. So that of course is going to increase some settling. I do have a, a Shishigiban uh, timber running around the entire perimeter of the building so that is acting as a footer but it would probably be better to have either a stone wall or a cinder block wall or a poured footing of some sort not only for the structure of the dust creek above it but it's also good practice when you are doing any sort of natural building or any building for that matter to ensure that you have good boots and a good hat. In other words, a good footer so that you're about uh, 24 inches off the ground with something that is non uh, affected by water, either stone or, or some masonry product. And then go on up there with either your straw bale or your cob or your dust creed or, or what have you. And then also to have two foot eaves all the way around on your roof so that any rain, unless it's driving sideways, is not going to come in contact with the wall surface at all. There are also a lot of questions about whether or not this is an appropriate technology to use in more tropical or wetter areas. And I can't honestly say if it would be affected at all. I think it would be fine, particularly with good boots and a good hat, but I honestly can't say. My uh, personal conditions are what would be called high desert. We're at about uh, 5,400 feet above sea level in zone five, in an area that only gets between 12 and 15 inches of rain a year. So the humidity, relative humidity, is usually around 45%. It's not a humid area, and in this application, I can absolutely say that it works great, and you will not have issues with uh, rot or mildew or anything like that. I suspect that the alkalinity of the wall will prevent those sort of organisms from wanting to take hold in the first place. That coupled with the fact that I highly recommend that you only use breathable wall coverings. So in other words, just lime plaster or clay plaster, 
um, you know, lime wash, uh, naturally pigmented paints would be cool, but like a latex paint, no, I would not recommend that. I would not recommend um, sheathing the outside or wrapping it with any vapor barrier or anything like that. We want the swell to breathe and that way it's going to be able to evacuate moisture. So even next to the wood members where you can commonly have problems with the association between uh, mortar and wood, be it Portland or lime or otherwise, because you have a way for that moisture to escape the wall, you are much less likely to develop any mold issues in those areas. Now, in future buildings, I will probably have a continuous skin of dustcrete around the entire building. So put the frame completely on the inside and not have any wood exposed to the outside. It just makes much more sense in terms of maintenance of the long haul and the durability of the wood, which is certainly going to be less durable than the dustcrete itself.